Donald Trump, soon to return to the White House after a decisive election victory, is already signaling that his second term will break with traditional governance norms. His early moves suggest a willingness to exercise power in a way that challenges the conventional checks and balances of Washington, with an approach likely to extend his influence across multiple branches of government. The atmosphere around Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate, where he is rapidly shaping his administration, is one of consolidation. Trump appears determined to build a cadre of loyalists who will reinforce his agenda with minimal internal opposition, prioritizing allegiance over institutional experience. Key shifts in Trump's staffing choices reflect this strategy. Notably, he has sidelined former allies like Mike Pompeo and Nikki Haley, who held significant foreign policy positions in his first term, in favor of figures more closely aligned with his agenda. For instance, his recent nomination of Elise Stefanik as U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations speaks to his interest in elevating trusted voices rather than veteran policy players. The swift appointment of Susie Wiles as White House Chief of Staff reflects a desire to hit the ground running with Wiles being a longtime campaign co-chair deeply ingrained in Trump's circle. This approach demonstrates Trump's insistence on surrounding himself with advisors he trusts to follow his lead without hesitation or challenge. Another notable development is Trump's assertive influence over the Senate's handling of cabinet confirmations. He has already called on Senate Republicans vying for leadership positions to support the use of recess appointments to bypass Senate votes. His insistence on this approach effectively demands that Republicans in Congress become facilitators of his agenda rather than representatives of an independent branch. This early declaration not only illustrates Trump's ambitions, but also hints at his willingness to challenge any resistance to his authority within his own party. Figures like Rick Scott have swiftly voiced support, signaling that many Republicans are prepared to fall in line even if it erodes long-standing practices designed to ensure democratic scrutiny of executive appointments. The return of Trump has also revived discussions about political retribution. Trump has consistently hinted at the possibility of using his power to investigate and potentially punish political opponents. Allies of Trump, including some members of Congress, have hinted that they will resist using government power to target political adversaries. However, Trump's repeated focus on retribution and his past approach suggests that he might leverage his executive power to pursue those he believes wronged him during his first term. One of the most unconventional elements of Trump's early transition has been his collaboration with billionaire Elon Musk, who recently joined a high-profile call between Trump and Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. Musk with his extensive government contracts and personal interests in international affairs, holds significant influence in Trump's inner circle. This partnership not only reflects Trump's preference for untraditional allies, but also highlights potential conflicts of interest, especially given Musk's dual role as an entrepreneur with global investments and a vocal advocate of Trump's campaign. Musk's involvement particularly on sensitive foreign policy matters, represents a significant departure from established norms, raising questions about the influence private citizens may wield over government decisions in Trump's administration. Internationally, Trump's re-election has already forced global leaders to reassess their relationships with the United States. Allies and adversaries alike are recalibrating in light of Trump's potential policy shifts on critical matters such as NATO and U.S. defense commitments. Trump's previous remarks suggesting a diminished U.S. commitment to NATO's mutual defense pact and his criticisms of support for Taiwan in the event of a Chinese invasion have unsettled many allies. His return to power brings a wave of uncertainty to long-standing alliances and, for many leaders, demands a recalibrated approach to American foreign policy. Trump's victory, which extended across key battleground states, has reinforced his standing and emboldened him to act without the constraints he may have felt in his first term. Meanwhile, Trump's reemergence has led to deepening introspection within the Democratic Party, which faces a leadership void and a fractured response to his renewed influence. Many Democratic leaders have yet to rally behind a cohesive strategy to counter Trump's agenda or reconnect with voters who supported him, 
signaling that they may struggle to form an effective opposition. This fragmentation leaves Trump with a freer hand as he prepares to return to the White House, seemingly more resolved to pursue his objectives than in his first term. The trajectory of Trump's second term, characterized by rapid decision-making, unfiltered rhetoric, and alliances with unorthodox figures, appears poised to redefine the boundaries of presidential power. As Trump's strategies unfold, the shape of American governance itself may be profoundly reshaped, potentially ushering in an era where conventional limits and alliances are tested and in many cases, reimagined.